Impressive, isn't she? The relentless hunting shadow of the Knight of Naga Drums. The last thing many an Orokin Lord ever saw. Varuna, she-wolf incarnadine. The heart of the pack, hunter of Godprey. We remember her as a primal horror. The pitiless devourer, stalking burning cities of white and gold, slavering for godflesh. This was not always so. Once, Varuna was the obedient guardian of the Circulus, the holiest of Yuvan temples upon none other than Veiled Lua. Like a loyal beast, Varuna would roam Lua with her four steel-maned wolves. The stealthy Dinar, the invigorating Raksh, the stalwart Lycaf, and the fierce Ulfron. But what they were sworn to guard was perverse. Wrong. In a ceremony reeking of Kuva, the Orokin candidate would force their consciousness into the new chosen body, the Yuvan consigning the mind of the hapless former owner to oblivion. They call this life-extending process continuity. Executor Tuval was one of the ruling seven and head of the Yuvan clerisy, high-ranking officiators who enacted the hideous ritual, all of whom were now all dead, torn apart, all save for Tuval, now a man pursued. He abandons his family to that night of horrors, his friends to the flames, and whips his slaves to ferry his decrepit, dying body to his personal ship. Destination? Void-locked Lua. Purpose? To initiate one final ceremony. To trade one last body, one last life, for his own, before the Empire burned. To slip the noose and escape the relentless hunting shadow that had, one by one, in just one night, found and eviscerated every last one of his clerisy peers, the shadow that had once protected them. I never liked Tuval. What followed made me loathe him even more. Here is Dinar, the Shadowed. He gave Varuna the gift of stealth that she might only take by surprise, but never be taken. Hmm. Let us speak of what made the Circular special, the first Void Conjunction. It came suddenly, steeping Lua in malevolent, lashing Void stuff. Within the Moon Plasm, Thoughts took horrifying physical forms, images dredged up from childhood nightmares or adult neuroses were abruptly tangible and real. Madness overtook many. It was to this place, the Circulus, that Tuval fled, through a void tormented by an extremely unusual conjunction. Thrashing eddies, violent currents, and the appearance of horrifying beasts never seen before or since. It was as if, some have noted, the fabric of the universe echoed the upheaval, tearing apart the fabric of the origin system. Coincidence? I have lived too long to believe so, but can provide no explanation greater than that. Hoping against hope that the Void would keep the shadow that stalked him from picking up his trail, Tuval touched down upon the powdery skin of Sacred Lua. What Tuval lacked in loyalty, he made up for with rat cunning. He should have known better. It is unclear precisely why Lua is a site of very special void conjunctions, but enacting continuity within the Circulus and Uvarium thereupon guaranteed a safe and strong transition, 
so long as certain rituals were correctly observed, a privilege reserved only for the seven themselves. Imagine the scene, as the innocent Yuvan would have witnessed it, the vivid insanity of it all. The appointed soprano bridging the gap between worlds with her song, the Oricon executor shrilling the ritual words, the bone-white void creeping in on all fronts, the Kuva steaming scarlet in its glass bowl, and the imposing wolf giant Varuna pacing the perimeter, four loyal wolves at her side. This wolf you see here is Raksh, the defender, Varuna's own loyal guardian, as she protected her Orokin overlord from whatever madnesses the Void Conjunction would bring, of which there were many. And on that night, Tuval had no such guardian, quite the opposite. Now, Tuval would need flesh into which he could pass, but the shipments of fresh young bodies from across the system were no more. Tuval, we will see, had laid a dark contingency. Rat cunning, as I said. The third of Varuna's wolves, Lycath, the stalwart brother, the provider, and soul of the pack. We know that Varuna and her wolves had served right after right. She had watched the mists and savagely destroyed anything that menaced the ceremony, flanked by Lycath's fury. The Yuvan ceremony, continuity as they called it, was an obscenity. The Orican elite, aged and foul, would slouch and leer as the Yuvan, young men and women, cultivated on Red Mars and worlds beyond for this dire purpose, were paraded before them. They would make their choice, conduct the ritual, and then, well, that young life would be gone. And when those eyes opened once more, it would be their murderer looking out from behind them. Is it any wonder Varuna, freed from the leash of loyalty, was so intent upon making a meal of the Yuvan clerisy? <laughs> I think not. Let's get to dessert, shall we? Behold, Ulfram the Fierce, the most formidable of Varuna's sept. Executor Tuval scrambled to set up the ritual room. This time, the ceremony was different. Instead of a soprano, there was a mere mandichord playing automated notes. And, instead of the prepared Yuvan, there was a most unusual cryopod, containing a young child, sleeping peacefully the aforementioned contingency. In Tuval's hands, so it is said, were an artifact and a codex belonging to none other than Albrecht Entrati himself, father of Void Travel, and a man who had sacrificed his sanity to it. Tuval opened the book to pages strange and profane. We know this, having retrieved it from the site much later, it is my belief that Tuval intended to protect himself from the horrors the Void would unleash, using what amounted to a madman's grimoire. A desperate act indeed. I like to imagine that, as he parted his withered lips to begin the ceremony, to call down the Void, that was the moment he heard Ulfran's ravening howl. From Void signatures, evidence at the site, and what recording technology survived that once-in-a-lifetime Void conjunction, I infer the following. <clears throat> Forgive an old man some dramatic license. The Kuva was poured, the lamps were lit, 
and the ritual of continuity began. As Tuval intoned the barbarous versicles of continuity, a horde, the breadth of which had never before been seen at such a ceremony, massed in the gathering void. Things with two heads or none, lopsided, broken-horned, perhaps drawing their being from Tuval himself, as if expressions of his vice. At this moment, I believe Varuna and her pack attacked, hoping to end the ceremony before it began. No such luck. The circle site was later found to be treacherous with the remnants of slain abominations. Varuna and her wolves tore into the manifestations, rending with axe and fang, while Tuval droned on, panicked. The pack hacked and tore their way through the throng toward him. Why was Tuval not the first to fall? I cannot answer. Perhaps Albrecht's work had something to it, or perhaps those beasts simply understood that this wretched old man was the only thing keeping the door open for them. Tremors shook the surface of Lua, and a great cry rang out, like that of a mother crying for her children. Tuval sweated. The Kuva trembled in its bowl. Varuna was relentless, demons falling to blade and fang. But it was not enough. The hordes of the void are without number, and this one... If hell has a hell, then those monsters knew it well. Gentle-eyed Raksh was the first to fall to scything blades. They killed Lycath next, then Dinar, and Ulfran last of all. Varuna had howled many times before, in hunger, in anger, and in triumph. But now, for the first time, she howled in grief. Varuna trod and swung without relent toward the circle, carrying by their silver scruffs the severed heads of her fallen, beloved wolves, severed from their dead bodies by her own hand. With one last ululating cry, Tuval's ritual reached its peak. Within the cripod, the child's eyelids fluttered, and Varuna staggered. In what scratchy stills survived in void corrupted data masses, what I saw between child and Warframe was recognition. Tuval took some meager scrap of courage from this delay and reached for the bowl of Kuva, now boiling and steaming with weird energies. Varuna struck him aside and seized the energized Kuva, not for herself, but for her wolves. Holding it high, she doused herself and her slain packmates with it. Embraced by the seething crimson glow, connected tissue propagated, sinew reached for bone, and within that marriage of occultism and science, she and her beloved wolves became one. Her brethren lived again in her. Varuna was now and evermore the heart of the pack. Cheated of his continuity, Tuval turned to flee. But his former warden was having none of it. Those who came after found nothing but gnawed bones, some of them unusually long, twisted within shreds of white gold raiments. Good. I did salvage one final image from those void corrupted data masses, however. That of Varuna herself, striding back toward her craft. The child cradled in her arms. Curious. <laughs>